Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, it's Wednesday. This is usually the busiest day I have, and it's the most exhausting day. But here it is. What time is it? 6.33, and I get to relax for the first time in probably three weeks. Literally, I get to kick my feet up. I still got work to do, but I finished the micro trust. Yay! The micro trust was the hardest one to do because I had to proofread every word. I had to go through the whole document to make sure that there were no errors in the document because of how it was done. Now, this one is pretty unique. Now, I, you guys keep hearing me talk about it, and I tell you, don't contact the companies. Don't email me about the micro trust or when we're going to have that ready. Uh, when I say don't do it and you do it, I'm just going to block you. I, I, we don't need your money. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the videos. We could have done, we could have put together some stupid micro trust for you guys a long time ago. We could have been creating trust after trust after trust and just pawning that junk off to you guys. Look, I spent all of this time trying to prove to you that tax credits and federal credits had value. Many of you still don't believe it to this day. Many of you still don't understand it. Some people receive $10 million worth of federal credits and they haven't done any research. Look, because of the price you're paying for this stuff, there is no way in the world we're going to do the research for you. If you want the packages and we tell you you have to do research, we've already given you the foundation. We've already provided you case laws. There's case laws in all of the stuff we provide you so that you can look at the case law and do your research from there, but you don't want to do that because you think you don't understand. Well, that's why they have ChatGPT. That's why they have all of these AI models, so you can now ask it to explain it to you in layman's terms so that you get it. Let me let me say it, so because some of y'all don't understand. Lord have mercy. Okay? Now, the microtrust is done. We just have to do the declaration and the certificate of trust. Okay, that's easy. Literally, that's easy. That won't even take uh, two hours for each of them. But we also have to do the mega trust. Now, the mega trust is not going to take as long as the micro trust. I should have that finished by the weekend, and then I got to proofread it. But it still has to be done, okay? Because that's the, the, the mother. That's the I'm in control of everything trust, okay? Got to take care of that. It, it's going to get done, all right? All right? Now, Let's talk about the secondary reason why I'm doing this video. Now, you see I've been keeping the video short as of late because I know some of you don't have the time to pay attention. Now, remember, in order to pay attention, you have to pay something. And some of you just don't have the time to pay attention. And that's how you pay attention normally is with your time. But some of you are too busy. That's why you're not going to achieve what you're trying to achieve. Don't get mad at me for pointing out the truth. Okay, because that's just... Like the song says, the way it is. So let me show you something. And I want y'all to pay attention because we're going to take it slow for some of you. Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933. It was called the Emergency Economic Banking Relief Act or National Emergency Economic Banking Relief Act. Now, they say it was designed to stabilize. We're going to get rid of Uh-oh, I can't move that. I got to undo that. We're going to get rid of this stabilize. I haven't proofread this part yet, y'all. Okay, I haven't proofread it, so now we got to do with the cases. Multiple federal court cases, including these cases, rule that the act designated bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, notes, drafts, trade acceptances, etc., as government obligations. So why are they telling you that your promissory notes, your bills of exchange, your so-called notes that you're sending them, your so-called money orders are worthless pieces of paper when they're government obligations. I didn't say they were government obligations. Look, these cases right here, here is one of the cases under the Emergency Bank Relief Act, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptance, and trade acceptances, are recognized as obligations of the United States. So let's do a field test. You ready to go out into the field, honey? Okay, we're going to go out into the field. Okay, one second, y'all. Let's go to the field. 
All right, we're going to go to this field. It's called the field of Google. Now, I don't know what Google's going to tell me because I haven't put this in there. It says no results found, but of course it found results. It doesn't like the quotations, okay, without quotes. It does not like the quotations, y'all. But remember, Google doesn't give me case law, okay? But we do have the case. Legal response to sovereign citizen movement. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that stuff is hilarious to me. So deposited as security. Such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank. See, Emergency Banking Act, it says it. I didn't say it. Now, I want to use this case right here because I didn't make this case up, 1976. Let's go ahead and pull this up. This is some scholarly work. They're going to respond to some sovereign citizen movement. Now, look at how they title it and everything. Montana Law Review. Man, they got some intelligent people over there in Montana. Okay, in other words, in 2016, armed with anti-government protesters led by Amon Bundy occupied the National Wildlife Refugee Camp in Oregon. Aw, snap! He occupied, he did an occupation. By October, an Oregon jury had acquitted Bundy and the others of the federal conspiracy and weapons charges against them resulting a result many believe can be explained hold on now we got I, I I didn't know this sorry only as jury nullification while some believe that the underlying basis for the group's claim were far-reaching implications for the meaning of foundation of the federal government's power in reality the groups like bundy simply misread misconstrued and misunderstood the united states constitution well ain't that something how is it that they misunderstood it and they were a jury and i thought you guys said that's justice well i'm gonna take a look at this i'm gonna eventually read this now see he wants to focus on sovereign citizen but shouldn't it be focused on what they were charged with if they misunderstand everything, well, let's go after the prosecutors, what they charged them with. The FBI describes sovereign citizens. Who gives up what the FBI describes? The FBI doesn't make law. We don't care how they describe citizens. That's not the FBI's job. They're called the Federal Bureau of Investigation, not the Federal Bureau of Naming. Anyway, my bad. I apologize. In fact, despite the no unifying leader or firmly established tenants, the Southern Poverty Law Center estimates that there are over 300,000 sovereign citizens in America today. Really? They just came up with an estimate, huh? What'd you base that on, homeboy? I don't understand. Most often, sovereign citizens contest United States jurisdiction over them as federal defendants because they have not consented to that jurisdiction. Well, that's true. The courts have no jurisdiction over a person unless they fall within the court's jurisdiction, which means they must be within the jurisdiction of the court. The court exercises no authority, but nobody understands that. The executive branch exercises no authority. The federal courts exercise no authority, and the executive branch, along with the congressional Legislative branch of governments exercise no authority. Go and look at the Constitution and see where they get authority over the people. They only gain jurisdiction when there is a crime. They cannot make a single law which abridges your fundamental rights. It's the First Amendment for which these guys say people are clearly misunderstanding the Constitution. The first five words, Congress shall make no law. Then it gives you some basic fundamentals abridging those rights they are prohibited from doing then the constitution the first amendment continues to the second amendment the second amendment which talks about bearing arms then leads to the third amendment which talks about militias and uh, armed forces still talking about bearing arms and remember they just talked about quartering in somebody's house during times of non-aggression now, hold on. Then the Fourth Amendment talks about people's right to possession of property. 
And then the Fifth Amendment talks about how nobody's property can be taken without due process of law. Then the Sixth Amendment talks about, hey, if you're going to take them to court and try them because the Fifth Amendment says that they cannot be put through double jeopardy or be allowed to testify against themselves, against their will, the Sixth Amendment protects them by giving them the right to counsel and the right to a fair trial. The Seventh Amendment says, hey, even if it's a civil trial, they have a right to a jury under the rules of common law. The Eighth Amendment says you can't do any of this to them that violates their rights because it's cruel and unusual punishment. Then the Ninth Amendment reserves their rights, their secured rights, and the Tenth Amendment retains their secured rights. The Bill of Rights is a cessational, it goes one after the other, document. It's not a one amendment, two amendment, three amendment, four amendment, as if the amendments are separate and distinct from each other. That's why amendments can be combined. Whew, people. So, sorry, we couldn't find that case. I know the case is in here, so let's pull up the case. We're going to do control F. Control as in Frank, and let me put that in there. Uh-oh, hold on now. Control V. All right, we want... Hold on, let's let's make sure we get everything. We want that right there. All right, we we going to just go back. All right. Now, they got 257 right here. There's the case right there, 257. So, let's see where 257 is. 257, my here. These constitutional statutes for clothes any sovereign citizen argument to the contrary. Let's find out what constitutional statutes they're talking about. Next, sovereign citizens claim that Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1, which states that no state shall make anything but gold and silver coin as tender for the payment of debts, invalidates Federal Reserve notes. Actually, it does invalidate Federal Reserve notes because, again, that's called legal tender. Congress does not have the right. Congress does not have the right. It says that they shall coin nothing but gold and silver coin as tender. That means legal tender, ladies and gentlemen. Then it says, first, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 5 of the Constitution provides that Congress has the enumerated powers to coin money. Yes, they do. But Federal Reserve notes are not money. It's already been decided. Okay. And remember, as money, gold and silver coin. Look, anything but gold and silver coin for the payment of debts. No, they, they took out the point as money. Hold on. Coin money, regulate the value thereof and of foreign coin and fix the standard weight and measurements. Now, they haven't regulated the value until 1933 where they said the value was uniform. But what they did is they took away the gold clause. They didn't have the authority to do that. That had to be voted on by the people. Shh, don't tell nobody. The power to coin money necessarily comes from the power to declare what is money. No, it didn't say that they get to declare what is money. Pay attention. There was nothing in the Constitution that says Congress gets to make money. It says that they cannot coin money other than being at gold and silver coin. Doesn't say anything about they get to make money, and the Constitution does not limit Congress to gold and silver coin. Actually, it does make anything but. <laughs> Pay attention. Oh, by the way, Congress represents the United States, so it's included in the word state. Shh, don't tell nobody. These guys are smarter than I am. They're with a law review. Probably some stupid, I mean, um, ignorant, I mean, stupid, um, it's stu it's, uh, mother, uh, uh, professor. Yeah, that's right. Probably some professor. I apologize. It was hard for me to get that one out. Lord have mercy, because they're smarter than I am. The power to coin money necessarily carries the power to declare what money is. No, it doesn't. Where is that necessary? They're talking about the necessary clause. No, it doesn't. Congress doesn't de get to declare what money is. The Constitution, if, they, if you want to say these articles are part of the Constitution, and they're not, the Bill of Rights was the Constitution. Y'all do need to understand that. The Bill of Rights, not the articles. The Bill of Rights were the Constitution. They were originally called articles. They later changed them to amendments. It's all right. The people didn't speak up. It's all right. Just letting you know what the original intent was. All right. And the Constitution does not limit Congress to gold or silver coin. Section 8 sets forth the powers of Congress, while Section 10 imposes restrictions on the state. Now, they're telling the truth right there. 
states can coin money according to this article so he's telling the truth that states can coin money but you will never hear them say that they, they came up with statutes later to stop the states from doing it okay states were coining their own money even in 1933 it was called emergency script and then they came up with these stupid federal reserve notes and the federal bank notes don't believe me go back and read the act all right, second, under this right here, United States Code, so you can tell that he doesn't know law, whoever's writing this, because the U.S. Code is not law. Too many mistakes in that piece of junk. And it doesn't say exactly what the original statute at large was to have said. Congress has mandated the United States coin and currency, including Federal Reserve notes and circulating notes, and any notes, such as promissory notes, Federal Reserve bank notes and national bank notes are legal tender for all debts, public charges, taxes, and dues. Foreign gold and silver coin are not legal tender for debts. Now, how can they say foreign gold and silver coins are not legal tender for debt? Who gave them the power? It says, shall coin nothing but gold and silver coin as payment for debts. So how can they determine that foreign, meaning gold and silver coins made by me, or made by another country, or made by another person, other than the United States? Moreover, the United States dollar is not backed by the United States citizens themselves as collateral for the payment of the bankruptcy debt. That's a lie. Hold on. Let's um, correct this idiot. Because he can tell that the people who don't know the law, this is Congress, not me. I didn't write this, y'all. I promise you I didn't write it. Because if I wrote it, it'd be much better. It'd be a better story. Under the new law, the money is issued to the banks in return for government obligations which includes bills of exchange, draft notes, trade acceptances, and baker's acceptances. The money, because they're at par, will be worth 100 cents on a dollar because it is backed by the credit of the nation. Of course, it's backed by the people. But he says it's not backed by the people. All snipe. up. But rather, the collateral assets of the Federal Reserve Bank post in order to obtain the notes. They don't need to have collateral assets. Remember the Federal Reserve put a moratorium on themselves for two years that they didn't need to back up any of, their <laughs> of the money that they were giving out? They got to work free of charge? They're not backed by anything. That's the Treasury. So, ladies and gentlemen, they put out junk like this and they make it sound like they got so much knowledge and so much power. I am so sorry we had to be bored by this junk. Because a right to travel does not and cannot be based on specific words derived from the dictionary definition sovereign citizens are left only with blah 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 definition of motor vehicle no we're not that's not uh, the, 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 the sovereign citizens wait you mean they're the only ones who can rely on 18 usc 31's definition you mean i can't do it i have to be a sovereign citizen to rely on this no let me make sure everybody understands the right to travel is a fundamental right in the United States. That's where the word freedom comes from. It's freedom to travel, freedom to move about. Go back. Look at the Constitution. Look at what it talks about being free. See, to restrict you, to prohibit you, to abridge your right to travel, is what Congress is prohibited from doing. Go back and look at the First Amendment. Shh! Don't talk to me. Talk to the way that it was written originally. Okay? sovereign citizens. It's a stupid word, but that's the word they created because they needed to create a new class of people. This is their target. The police say these are their enemy. So don't be one of these, y'all. Be one of those people who say, no, I'm exercising my right. Now, if you want to be a sovereign citizen, you're free to be a sovereign citizen. Okay? I, I don't know what you mean by sovereign citizen, but, Your Honor, if you want to be a sovereign citizen, you are free. I'll call you a sovereign citizen from now on if that's what you want. No, a uh, sovereign citizen. Uh, what were you trying to tell me? Because I didn't understand you. I, I don't understand sovereign citizen talk. So as long as you talk that sovereign citizen stuff, you, you, sovereign citizen, I, I don't know how to respond to you. What jurisdiction are you under, Mr. Sovereign Citizen? Seriously. They call you a sovereign citizen, just call them one back. Tell them they're sounding like a sovereign citizen. Yeah, I've read the articles from the FBI, and you're sounding just like the definition of one of them sovereign citizens the FBI had in their report. 
I, I, I don't know why you're sitting up here talking that sovereign citizen stuff. Do you know that the FBI says that you are an enemy to the United States? You're violating the Trading with the Enemy Act by doing that. You need to stop talking like a sovereign citizen, uh, sir. Uh, wait, how did you get to sit on a bench? I didn't think they let sovereign citizens become judges. Are you pretending to be a judge? Okay, I'm going to let that go right now. See, stuff like this gets me agitated. Talking about people need a leader in order to exercise their rights. That's a shame that they talk in stuff like that. All right, let's get back to the point that I was trying to make so that you guys get it, so that you can hold on to it. Ladies and gentlemen, as you just read, because I just showed it to you, it tells you right here that government obligation or notes, drafts, bills of exchange, pay attention. In return for government obligations, bills of exchange, drafts, notes, trade acceptances and bankers acceptances. All of these are contractual obligations, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's prove that that's what they mean because I don't want y'all taking my word for it because you know them sovereign citizens say that we we's don't listen to nobody, that we got to listen only what they say. And I don't want to be doing no listening to no sovereign citizens upon deposit with the United States Treasury, the Treasury of the United States, of all contract obligations of the United States. Or, so let's find out what that conjunction is. Y'all y'all remember my conjunction, junction, what's your function? Let's find out what that means. O-R-D-E-F. Let's find out what it means, or used to link alternatives. Woo-wee! Synonyms and explaining of a preceding word or phrase. Well, let's see if we can explain a preceding word or phrase. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations, the preceding word or phrase, obligations of the United States, or in combination, any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank and trade acceptance are obligations of the United States that are deposited as the security and gold for reserve notes and are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. So if any one of these idiots tell you that your bill of exchange is a worthless piece of paper, then you need to give them the case citation supporting it. What I am going to do for y'all in the description of this video, pay attention. I am going to include this information. Okay, we're not going to include that information <laughs> where he says he made a mistake because he did make a mistake. That's perplexity because I was putting perplexity in her place, you know, because she, she, she acts the fool. Alternative court case citations and quote directly affirming the Emergency Bank and Relief Act designation of financial instruments like bills of exchange and bankers' acceptances, notes, drafts, bill, uh, traders' acceptances as obligations of the United States government. And we gonna give y'all all of this. That's right, we not gonna leave none of it out. That's right, we gonna get it on in. So give me a second while I copies it because this is the section we gonna copy and we gonna place there because I've already put it through all three chat bots. Perplexity, poll, and chat GPT. And they all agree that the law says exactly what you heard me point out is that there are obligations of the United States. Now, I want you all to pay attention. I've been saying this for years. So if you hear people in their videos start highlighting the points that you hear me highlighting, you'll know where they got it from. Now, I don't mind them getting it from here. It has bothered me a little bit that they are pawning it off as if they came up with the idea. As if they were the genius. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I'm getting a little excited. And I'm sorry. As if they were the genius who came up with this stuff in the first place and they were not. Shame on them. Okay, look. I got to go outside. I have some cement. I have to go lay. I just, I, I, it's quick set cement. I just lay it down, spray it with some water, and let it harden. And then soak it with water and then it hardens. Because it's, we have ground here and during the winter it's horrible so i'm setting the cement now so when the winter comes i'll have something to walk on and i'm just fortifying it to make it a little bit more stable been man i i get a couple of bags 90 pound bags of cement only a few because i can't put too many and 
I when I go to Home Depot, I put four bags, come home, lay it out. Then next time I go, four more bags, and I continue my little trek. That's all I can handle right now. Normally, I would have them bring 94 bags of 90-pound cement, and I pay for them to deliver it. But the only problem with that, pay attention because it's important, is the bags would sit there for too long, and then the moisture would get in it, and then the cement would harden, and then I'm left with, you know, trouble. So to keep that from happening, this is what I have to do. So I was going as of probably a couple of weeks from now, order some cement and some other items so that I can get some work done around here. And I'll try to get it done in the mornings when I don't have to be out there in the afternoon and take care of some small things. All right, I'm going to probably be putting a tiny home, uh, an actual tiny home, not one of those little tiny, tiny homes, but a real tiny home with two to three bedrooms, those type of tiny homes. I'll probably be doing that, my hope is, by the end of the year. But we'll let you guys know. All right. Hey, you all take care of yourselves. Uh, this information right here, like I said, I'm going to copy it now. Let's do it again. I'm going to copy it so that you guys will have it. It's the case citations that you're focused on, especially this one. So they only talk about people referring to these cases. This is a 1973 case. But you notice most of them are Ninth Circuit Courts of Appeals, which is interesting. Ninth Circuit, 1976. And then you got 1944, United States Supreme Court, 1991, 19, 9th Circuit. 9th Circuit seems to be the only court that tackles this issue. Okay? The rest of them seem to be skirting it. Oh, well. Well, thank you all for entertaining me today and being entertained by me. And we will speak with you soon. Some of you are going to get how important it is that your promissory notes are government obligations. So you'll be, a, you'll be less afraid in writing a bill of exchange to pay your debt. But some of you must understand you're going to have to go to court. You have the court cases to go to court. No more letting the judge tell you what constitutes payment and what doesn't. That's what I've been trying to tell you guys. There is no money. It is paper backed by paper. Go back and listen to the president of El Salvador explain it because he hit it on the money. All right. Hey, take care, guys. We'll continue to talk about this until y'all finally get it. Hey, there he is right there. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. Uh-uh. We're going to let him explain it. Hold on. I mean, in theory, it would make sense, right? If they can print unlimited amounts of money, why would they need taxes for? The answer is simple, but it's very shocking. Tell them. The real problem is that you pay high taxes only to uphold the illusion that you are funding the government, which you are not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Naib. I, I said Naib. See? Naib. Naib, thank you. Did you hear him? Go back and listen to this speech, ladies and gentlemen. It was done in uh, February, right after he got elected. It's called the CPAC speech. CPAC 2024. President of El Salvador. President of El Salvador, CPAC 2024. That's C. Go and listen. The whole speech is okay. You will learn something. But he tells you that your paper is worth something in the United States. It's not worth anything outside the United States. But in the United States, oh, your paper has some backing. Full faith and credit of the United States government. Government obligations are full faith and credit. Shh, don't tell nobody. Some of you guys are going to get what I'm saying and you're going to, whoo, you're going to take off because your minds are gone now. But some of you, it's going to take you a couple of listens and a couple of looking over everything for you to understand that when you write a bill of exchange to pay your bills and you're prepared to go to small claims court and take these fools to small claims court, say they have to deposit that with the Federal Reserve because the law requires it. Because they're at par with Federal Reserve notes. Man, everything is done. Everything is done. All right. Hey, got to go. But I am so glad we had this conversation. Take care. 30 minutes of me, Arriva Dirty.